Hey y'all, what's good, what's poppin'? So for today's video, I'm doing a request. I had a comment a couple videos ago from a subscriber asking for me to do my foundation routine specifically. I just figured today we would sit down and I would just show y'all my everyday basic foundation routine, what I do. Before we get into the video, I just wanna say welcome back to everyone who's been here before on my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. Before we get into it, I just wanna say don't forget to go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell button as well so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And with that, let's get into the video. So so the first things first, before I apply any foundation, I like to just go ahead and prime my skin for makeup, apply a primer. Now some people will say that primer is optional, you don't really need to apply a primer. I will say you don't necessarily need to apply a primer, but you definitely want to make sure before you apply any sort of foundation or anything, you are prepping your skin for makeup, you want to make sure that you have a nice base for makeup so that your foundation is going to apply smoothly, it's going to last throughout the day, it's not going to look spotty, patchy, anything like that. So I do have a couple primers in my arsenal just you know to help kind of prep my skin for whatever I have going on I have mattifying primers for times when I tend to be more oily I have hydrating primers for times when I tend to be a little bit more dry and I love how hydrating primers also add that little tackiness to your skin so your foundation sticks a little better but on a normal day if my skin's not really doing anything out of the ordinary it's not acting too crazy I'm not really too concerned with controlling oil or you know hydrating my skin I, I like to go for a primer that just kind of smooths everything gives me a nice base for my foundation to lay on so one of my go-to's is this Benefit Porefessional Primer. It does have a slight mattifying effect, so I would definitely say this is a great primer for those of you who have combination to slightly oily skin. If your skin is over the top oily, I don't know that it's gonna keep your skin matte all day, but for my personal skin type, it's definitely combo, leans slightly to the oily side, and it keeps me looking pretty good all day. On a day where my skin isn't acting up, I don't need to address any special issues, this is a nice go-to for me. I just love how smooth this primer feels on the skin when you apply it. I swear, after you apply that, your skin feels so, at least for me, my skin feels so buttery and I just want to keep touching it and I have to remind myself like, no bitch, you're not trying to get acne. Then after I've gone ahead and primed everything so I have a nice smooth base, I like to go on foundation. So for today's foundation, I'm going to throw it back. I'm going to wear something I haven't worn in a video in a while. I'm going to take this Dior Backstage Foundation. This is in the shade 2W. So what I like about this foundation for an everyday wear it has a really nice buildable coverage. You can go as light or as heavy as you want, but no matter how heavy it goes, it doesn't really cake up. It blends seamlessly every time. It gives you such a beautiful finish. You honestly, with this foundation, I personally don't feel like you need a primer. I like to prime my skin just because, you know, I like to have that extra smooth Instagram in real life look going on, but you know, if you just want to skip a step or you don't see the point in primer, as long as you have a nice moisturized base underneath, I promise you this foundation will lay beautifully on top. When you apply foundation, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can start by applying some on the back of your hand and then taking some on a beauty blender from the back of your hand and buffing it in that way. You can put some on a flat surface of the beauty blender and start tapping it on that way. My personal preference, I like to take a foundation brush. This is just an elf foundation brush. And I like to apply some directly to the brush and just take that and kind of spread it onto my skin. It's honestly such an extra step. You really don't need to do this. This is just personal preference. I just like to do this so I can kind of gauge how much I'm wearing on my skin before I blend it out, see if I'm gonna need to layer it at all or anything. And I don't know, I just really like going in with a brush. I just love having, you know, my Casso moment, my Michelangelo moment, and being an artist and really just getting in with my product and painting it on. <laughs> Brood. So I went ahead and applied some all over. As you can see, I just kind of got it like on my skin, literally. I'm gonna take a damp beauty blender and I'm gonna go ahead and just buff that in all over my skin. Jonah, if you don't cut it out right now. So that's what one layer looks like buffed in. As you can see, all it really did for me was kind of even out my skin tone. And if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm not really a huge fan of wearing a full coverage foundation. Sometimes if I go out at night, I will, just because it really doesn't matter in a low light situation, people aren't gonna be able to see your makeup that well. But I really like to have that like no makeup makeup look. Like I like to have my skin looking beat for the gods, but still looking like it's my skin. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna just go ahead and take a little bit on the beauty blender and just dab that directly on the skin like that. 
but I don't think I'm gonna do any more than two layers because any heavier and it won't look cakey because like I said this foundation is really good at building up and not looking cakey but like I'll definitely have that oh she's wearing foundation look you know what I'm saying so for just an everyday where I'd probably cap it off at like two layers like I'm doing right now one and a half two layers whatever you would classify that and that just does a pretty good job of evening everything out pretty well, giving me a nice base to work with for the rest of my makeup. I'm not gonna cover everything, but that's what concealer's for. You really want some of your skin underneath to still peek through, especially if you're just doing like a daily makeup look. You don't wanna cover up everything you have going on underneath. I mean, I still got some freckles right here on my nose that's still peeking through. So I like to let stuff like that peek through, continue to show itself. Kind of adds to the illusion of your skin, but better. So that's what we're looking like with all the foundation applied. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and actually, now that I have my foundation applied, I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows first before I go in with concealer. So I'm just taking my Benefit Precisely My Brow. This is in the shade five. I always say this, but you wanna go ahead and just take a shade that's one shade lighter than your natural brow color because, you know, if you fill your brow in with a pencil that's the exact same shade, you're gonna have that unnatural filled in look. If that's what you're going for, by all means, definitely pick up whatever shades you want. But if you wanna have a softer, more natural brow you want to use something that's a little lighter than your natural hair color just trust me once it's all filled in and blended it's gonna look a lot more natural so what I like to do towards the front I like to keep it nice and wispy like that give it that effect but I'll just fill in some of the sparse hairs I have here especially towards the bottom I like to have like a really strong outline on the bottom of the brow and then the top is kind of where I let things get a little messy sometimes I like to draw one line, just kind of framing the bottom of the brow. And I do that along the whole bottom length of the brow, basically. And then for the top of the brow, I'll kind of start about a third of the way in here. So like my natural hairs here in the front kind of go up and then they start to kind of lay more going towards the side. So where they start to change from laying upwards to laying towards the side, that's where I will start outlining my brow. And again, I just do a nice line outlining the brows. If you go a little over, don't sweat it. We're gonna fix everything with concealer later. But I like to just do this to give my brow some extra definition, some extra shape. And then once you have your two lines, I like to just kind of focus more towards the end of the brows here because that's where I have problems with sparseness. And like I said, I like to leave it looking a little wispy in the front because that gives a little bit more of a natural look. And then I'll just go ahead and just fill in wherever I see any blank spots. I'll just go ahead and do some hair like strokes. Once my brow's looking how I like it to look, it's looking full enough. I just like to take the brush end, the spoolie end, and go ahead and just brush everything through to make it look nice and even. And then once I've gone ahead and filled in the brow, I'm gonna go ahead and just set it with a brow gel. So this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. And I like to kind of in the front lay my hairs up like how they normally would. And then once I get about a third of the way in, I start to lay them down and out like how they naturally grow. And that is the brow all filled in and whatnot. And then to just make it extra sharp, and this is why I do the brows before concealer, to make it extra sharp, I'm gonna go ahead and take this e.l.f. concealer brush because it has a really nice fine tip like that. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my Tarte Shape Tape. I'm gonna grab some of the concealer off the doe foot applicator. And then just very carefully taking the brush, I'm gonna go ahead and just outline my brow. And with this, I like to take a concealer that's just a shade or two lighter than my foundation shade, just so I have that really sharp, defined look. There's a clear line of demarcation between my brow and the foundation. If it looks kind of crazy right now, that's okay, because I'm gonna take a beauty blender and just blend out the edges so it blends in seamlessly with the rest of the skin. Usually I would take a smaller one to do this, but I'm too lazy to go fetch it, so y'all get the point. And just make sure you do a really good job blending. Even though, like I said, I prefer to take a lighter shade, I don't want it to look too crazy. I just want it to have a sort of natural highlight so that when you look at the brows, they stand out. So as you can see here, I've just gone ahead and buffed out the concealer completely, and it just gives you a nice, super defined, but still natural brow. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do the same process on the other brow real quick. Okay, so that's the completed brows. So now that I have done like 
weight. I'm gonna go ahead and just conceal any blemishes or anything like that I still have going on after the foundation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the same shape tape that I was using. I went ahead and cleaned off the dough head applicator, just kind of scrape the excess off into the tube. I find that the applicator can pick up like a lot of product in the tube and it can be really hard to blend out afterwards. So kind of just brush off the excess and I'm just tapping what else is left on top of all the spots I have peeking through here. And then I'm also just gonna take a little bit on my under eyes. You know, I don't like to do a crazy amount on the under eyes. Like I'm not trying to contour, highlight, strobe, anything like that. I'm really just trying to neutralize any sort of redness or dark spots or anything like that I have going on. Once I have the concealer applied where I want it, I like taking my Morphe M173 brush and I like to just buff out the foundation just a little bit and then without disrupting the concealer on top of the actual hyperpigmentation or whatever I'm trying to cover, I like to just buff out the edges. So I still have a nice spot of full coverage right on top of all my hyperpigmentation and all that, but it blends out seamlessly with the rest of the foundation so you can't see that I'm wearing concealer. You really wanna just take your time with this. You wanna have a nice light hand. Just really take your time blending out your concealer. Trust me, it's gonna pay off in the end with the final look, especially if you're going for a more natural everyday look. Now sometimes, like right here, unfortunately this is a more recent breakout. It's kind of scabbed over here and sometimes with texture like that, a concealer unfortunately can't really do anything about that. I can't cover up a scab. It just doesn't have the right texture or anything like that to grip on the makeup. So unfortunately, sometimes you just gotta take the L, but that's why you want to make sure you do an extra good job of blending out on the rest of the skin so that it looks extra flawless, so that any imperfections that do manage to slip through the cracks aren't, you know, like an eyesore or anything like that. And then for the under eyes, I do like to just take the Beauty Blender and just blend it out even more just because I don't want it to look cakey. I don't want it to crease up throughout the day, anything like that, even though I am gonna go ahead and set this in a minute. I just wanna ensure that I minimize any chances of creasing or anything like that because I want this to look nice, flawless, natural, and skin-like. And then before I set my face, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do my first layer of highlighting. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this Benefit Watts Up Mini Highlighter. I love this color. Honestly, one time I was at work and I saw a girl and her highlight was so stunning. I legit had to like walk all the way across the room and I was like, excuse me, like I hope this isn't awkward, but what is your highlight? It's blinding and I need it in my life. And she told me it was this, so I went ahead and picked it up. So I like to just take this e.l.f. setting brush because it has a nice sort of beveled tip. I don't even know if beveled is the right word, but it has that going on for it. So it's nice to gently lay it on product and I just like to kind of dust it on the cheekbones a little bit. I'm gonna take my time to build this up, but it just has such a beautiful finish. And what's nice about this too, is it's a cream to powder, so it goes on creamy, it blends out easily like a cream, but then it sets like a powder, so it has all day wear. And you don't have to, I'm going to, but you don't have to set it with a powder or anything like that. Like I said, the cream to powder finish, it does that all on its own. So I like to just take my time and build it up with a brush, just to give me like a little natural highlight. I don't like anything too intense with this because I am gonna go ahead and set it with a actual powder highlight in a minute. But I just want you guys to see like just how beautiful this shade is. So you compare this side to this side, like yeah, she's dull, she's flat. Look at that, she's lit. The camera's really not doing it justice. Like you just need to see it with your own eyes. It's such a beautiful finish. Honestly, Benefit has some legit products and this is one of them. I'm living for this highlighter. So I'm also gonna highlight the tip of the nose just to kind of draw some attention there. And I'm gonna take a thinner brush. This is an e.l.f. eye crease brush, so this is meant more for like eyeshadows and creases, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it because it has a nice thin tip, a nice precise tip. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of the highlight on that and just kind of run some down the center of the nose, just like right in between my eyes. When you do it like that, it just gives your nose like a nice sort of like upturned appearance. When I add the powder highlight, it's gonna pop and you'll see what I mean. And then also because this is a nice thin brush, I like to go ahead and take some of the product on this and also just kind of hit right in here, right in the, uh, what's that called? The arch of the brow, that's what it's called. I like to hit right in the arch of the brow. So I like to be really careful to just hit the arch and that really makes that part pop. And again, I like to use a really, really fine brush like this to do it so that I have some precision. And that's what the natural glow looks like. You could leave it at that 
especially for a daytime look. If you don't wanna go too heavy with pat or anything, you can definitely just leave it at a cream highlight like this, just to make everything pop, make all your features stand out, bring forward the ones that you want to pop. But I'm gonna go ahead and set it with the powder highlight in just a minute and make it even more intense. I just want to show y'all what a base layer of highlight looks like and what it can do for your skin as far as like adding dimension, bringing life back to your face. And this is all without contour, bronzing, anything like that. All right, and that is what the skin looks like with just a base layer of highlight going on. Also, before I go ahead and set my face, just to add a little bit of dimension, I'm not gonna contour or bronze or anything like that, but I don't like to have just like foundation and highlight going on because as you can see I'm popping obviously but I look a little flat so I like to just add a little bit of color to my face so I'm going to take some cream blush it's important that you use a cream product because cream products are going to blend into your skin better and they're going to look more seamless versus a powder I'm trying to keep the powders to a minimum because this is just my everyday foundation look so for my blush I'm going to use this flower beauty blush balm and this is in the shade pinched so got this from Ulta Beauty it was like ten dollars this these products had like phenomenal reviews so I was really intrigued to try it out and I've seen that these are allegedly a do it for like the Glossier cloud paint which I tried before and I was a big fan of I actually have their cloud paint in the shade beam I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys on the back of my hand a quick comparison so right here we have the cloud paint from Glossier and then this is the flower beauty Let me just go ahead and blend those out real quick so you can see and as you can see they both have a really similar consistency. They're a nice gel tint. They blend into the skin. They're sheer, but they're also buildable. So you can build these up to whatever you want, or you can keep it as sheer as you want. I am going to keep it a little on the sheer side, but I'm going to build it up just a little bit to give me some color, because like I said, I'm not doing any bronzing or contouring or anything like that. So this is really, besides highlighting all that I'm going to use to kind of bring some definition back to the face. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply it directly from the dropper onto my face and I'm just going to apply it like right under where I highlighted on both cheeks. And then taking a Real Techniques Expert face brush, I'm just going to go ahead and gently buff that out over the area and just add a little bit of warmth. I'm going to add some to the center of my face as well. And this is a nice nude shade. It's not too pinky or too orange, so I feel like it'll work with most skin types. And then whatever's left over, I'm just going to go ahead and take over my nose, just kind of give that nice, like, sun-kissed effect. And as you can see, it just warmed up the face a little bit, added a little bit of color, but it also didn't throw off the whole look. Now I'm going to go ahead and set my face. So for the majority of my face, I'm going to take this e.l.f. HD powder, I'm going to take a Real Techniques powder brush, I'm going to go ahead, grab some powder, and I'm going to dust off the excess. And then, normally I would apply this to just like my whole face indiscriminately, but I'm going to be careful to apply it to all the parts of my face except where I've applied highlighter. And it's really important that you don't apply this to the spots where you've applied highlighter. Because if you apply it where you applied highlighter, you're just going to mattify the highlight that you set down. And that's literally like not the point of highlighter. That's why we highlighted in the first place was to bring light and attention to those areas. I'm going to powder around the highlight with this. All right. And as you can see, I mattify basically the whole face except where I've already applied highlighter. Those are the only parts that are still standing out. And like I said, I'm gonna go over those with a powder highlight now to go ahead and just set everything in place and make it pop a little more. I'm gonna take that same e.l.f. eye crease brush that I was taking earlier. I'm gonna take this Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector and this is in the shade Opal. Let me dust off the excess and then just kind of brush it over where I applied cream highlighter earlier to just really set it in place and intensify the highlight effect we have going on. I'm just gonna be careful to make sure I really dust off the excess with this because since I am trying to keep this nice and see seamless and skin-like. I still do just want to kind of tone down the powder look and make sure that this isn't looking too powdery on my skin. And then taking the same Real Techniques brush I use for my cheeks, I'm going to go ahead and set the cheek highlight with that. You just want to use a really light hand. I'm just kind of setting over the powder. You don't want to move the blush, you don't want to move the concealer or any of that. So just be really careful. Use a nice gentle hand and just kind of like place the highlighter on the face. That's really all I'm doing is just placing it. Okay, and that is like the full face. As you can see, everything 
has been nice and evened out. Everything is nice and highlighted. It looks nice and healthy and glowy. And we added some color back to the cheeks with some cream blush. So it does look skin-like. I do look like I have some color to my face. I don't look dead. We did the brows, all that. Just to kind of help everything sort of come together and make it look nice and natural, especially for a daytime look. Because I did use a little bit of powder, you do want to go ahead and use a setting spray just to help everything melt together and make it look seamless and just make it look like your skin. So I'm just going to take this Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray and just go ahead and set my face with that. Okay, everything is nice and dry now. So that is the completed look. This is just what I like to do when I'm trying to like put forward my best face. You know, it's me, but better. I hope the subscriber that requested, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that everyone else enjoyed this video as well. I hope you enjoyed sitting here, listening to me ramble and beat my face. Be sure to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment below letting me know what you liked about this video, what you disliked, any sort of critiques, commentary, anything like that, or you want to see a certain type of video in the future. Like I said, this was requested by subscribers, so if you have any sort of video requests, leave those in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to check them out and get to them in the future. If you haven't already, just go ahead and click that subscribe button and click the bell button if you haven't already so that you can subscribe to the channel and you can stay up to date and get notifications every time I upload a new video. And with that being said, I'll be back with a new video shortly. Bye!